Hollyoaks makes its way to number two in my soap opera rankings for November 2021. And what can I say about Hollyoaks? I honestly just love this show. I can't even lie. Out of all the soap operas left today, Hollyoaks has been the one to keep me entertained the most over the past decade. It just does. Yes, it could get really, really stupid at times. Yes, it could get really, really over the top sometimes. But I honestly feel like Hollyoaks puts in the most effort to stay both entertaining and exciting. And, you know, even bringing social issues to their stories. So Hollyoaks does what it needs to do to stay a good soap opera, in my opinion. I'll get to the main stories in a while. Um, once again, number one and number two in these rankings is kind of like, you know, character driven versus plot driven. I don't think Hollyoaks is as super plot driven as Home and Away was for October when it was when I was trying to decide between Coronation Street and Home and Away, but I still think Hollyoaks kind of goes on the plot driven side. Uh, at the start of the, I'm just going to touch upon some of these smaller stories of the month of November. First, we had Brooke and Ripley. We had Brooke still in clothes for Ripley uh, to, you know, try and push Ripley's secondhand clothes business, trying to save the planet that way. Uh, I hope we continue to see more of Brooke and Ripley as uh, we we go on into these new months. Because, uh, well, I mean, on Hollyoaks, they do this thing, and a lot of soap operas these days, they do this thing where they kind of like cycle stories. For a couple weeks, it'll be these stories will be the main stories, and then the next couple weeks, it's different stories that are the main stories shown on TV. And the next week, it's other stories that are shown on TV. It's like a cycle. So some stories disappear for weeks at a time that way, but that's kind of what happened with Brooke and Ripley. We saw some of Diane's OCD, which I think they're doing a good job depicting Diane's super OCD. And while Diane was gone, Becky ended up kissing Tony. That's one of the other smaller stories going on. One of the more main stories of November was Ms. Bo remembering Allie took advantage of her when uh, she was basically one of his students ended up raping her, which is how Shaq was conceived. Now I talked about on Home and Away how they were doing a very similar story. Home and Aways was very rushed. Hollyoaks has not been. I think they're doing a really good job. Um, when when Shaq found out how he was actually conceived via rape, he ended up publicly calling out Ali for raping his mother. And another person came out to make an allegation against Ali as well. I think they really have done a good job with this story. It's it's one of those Hollyoaks stories that kind of started out weak with Shaq just looking for his parents. And then somehow it ends up being uh, Mizba, of course, who's basically, I think he thought it was his aunt before. Turns out not so much. So it's been a lot of drama for that family. And I just think it's developed into a very powerful story. As we, as we really started to dive into the past. Now, Martine and Felix got married, which I thought was great, but we had some addition to this story with a lot of the black characters on the show as we, it was revealed who Nate really is. Nate has been this character that's been on for a few months now. We finally get more into his backstory. Turns out he knew or dated Lisa Loveday at one point. Lisa, of course, was murdered by Toby, and that's been swept under the rug by his sister and Felix. So Nate's been trying to find out more info on Lisa's disappearance. Toby's kind of onto that. This has been another one of those Hollyoaks type stories that I just think, you know, it's been weak at times. It's been drawn out at times because Lisa was killed quite a long time ago. But at least it all comes back around now. They don't just completely let it go. Like, it can happen on American Soap sometimes, whereas these stories just drop off the face of the earth and a person gets away with a crime. But I think it's starting to pick back up again, and I'm glad because 
when Toby and his sister Celeste first came onto the show, like I think it was probably almost two years ago now, unless I'm remembering that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was almost two years ago. They first came on shrouded in mystery. It was very intriguing. And at that point in time, there was a really stupid story going on with an grandma, with an old woman being a serial killer, which is really ridiculous. One of my least favorite Hollywood stories ever. But since that was all going on, uh, Toby and Celeste's introduction was probably one of the better parts of the show for me and the more intriguing part of the show for me. Um, so I thought their introductory story was so good that lately they've just kind of fallen off. They really still need to get a direction for Celeste. But, you know, the Toby story is picking back up. Toby's tried to change from being the psychopath he was when he first came to town, obviously ended up killing Lisa. So we will see what Nate is able to dig up and where that story goes. I think it's it could go a lot of different directions. Um, but they've kind of written Toby into a corner. I don't really like when characters get well, I don't like when characters that I like and I still think have a ton of potential get written into corners. So we'll see how Hollyoaks actually gets out of that. But Hollyoaks historically is pretty good at getting out of being written into corners. So we'll see if they're able to do that here. Now, I think the main story for November was probably Fergus, you know, in October, Felix faked his death so that Joel and Felix and Warren can try and take Fergus down. Well, they got some help with, from James as well. I was glad that James gets got brought into the story. James, another great character that desperately needs real story and a real direction for the character. So yeah, they basically learned that Fergus had ran that whole online site that he basically set cameras around town to spy on women and possibly set up a tra uh, sex trafficking biz business. But Fergus ended up setting Warren up to take the fall for that crime. Warren got arrested. But uh, during that same time, it, when Warren got arrested, it's because uh, Fergus had Maxine meet up with the guy who had been watching Maxine's live feed camera that he set up. And Warren went to save her, but then Warren got blamed for the crime. But eventually Maxine caught Fergus in a lie. And uh, Fergus had been dating her mother, Trish. And in the end, Trish was going to try and uh, set Fergus up and get him to admit some stuff while wearing a wire. That did not go right. Fergus was going to kill her, but then Maxine hits Fergus with a bottle, killing him. I'm glad Fergus is dead, first of all. But I really thought the climax of the story was very engaging. It had some good cliffhangers. And it was the main reason why I did put Hollyoaks at number two, because it brought the drama. Uh, the, the stakes were there. I, I didn't really know where the story was going to go. Warren got beat up in prison, ends up alive. But it seems like the police are still going to try to take down Warren. Since Warren does have, indeed have a past criminal history, one other story I do need to talk about, that's Darren's kidnapping, uh, where Nancy is being led to believe that he just left her again for another woman, when in reality he's been kidnapped, but he's been kidnapped by this fucking random villain that nobody fucking knows. I don't know, I mean, there's still time for it to develop into a bigger story and for him to be held captive by someone that's you know, he has a history with Darren's a character that's been around forever, so they could connect this kidnapping kidnapping to the past. But if it really just stays this random villain, villain then it's going to be stupid. But overall, November for Hollyoaks was just thoroughly entertaining. I do enjoy watching Hollyoaks. I think it is the most engaging soap opera of all of them. And will be staying high in my rankings for a while. Like I've talked, I think I talked about in October. Hollyoaks always has like three to four months out of the year where it gets too stupid. So it might fall during that period. But for the most part, I ex expect Hollyoaks to most of the year be in my top five at least. 